I'm concerned about the future of Guild Wars 2. I may be making a statement like that quite a bit too early, but it's been on my mind a fair bit lately, so let's have a chat about what's led up to this and the new mini expansion plan. What ho chaps, I'm Magical Mike, and recently I've been getting back into Guild Wars 2 once again. I've done many videos about the game, so drop a like and stay a while and listen. I've played since the betas in 2012, so I've been here for the whole 10 plus years, not counting Guild Wars 1 as well. I'd say I've stuck with this game for a long time, and I've put in my fair share of Knights of Too Many Hours, done pretty much all of the possible content, and gone from absolutely obsessed playing every single day to outright not logging in for months at a time, and everything in between. I say this to point out that I've also seen my fair share of times in the game where there's been content droughts, bad news, something new coming out and the community flip-flopping all over the place with their general opinions, just for some context about this whole thing and where I stand on it. At the moment, despite the nature of this video and what I'm going to talk about, I've been playing a lot lately, for the past few months in fact. I have stuff to do and while I have that stuff that I want to do, I'm relatively happy with the game but that doesn't stop me wanting to talk about the future of it. I'll also probably make a video on all of the stuff that I am currently enjoying doing at the moment too, so don't think it's all doom and gloom. I am what you'd call a fair weather player at this point. I jump in and out of the game sometimes, usually when there's some kind of content update to pay attention to, and the rest of the time I just sort of log in now and again, unless I get obsessed with it again. And I'd say that's probably what most Guild Wars 2 players do. They don't take it super seriously and just kind of play when we fancy it. Content updates usually rekindle that interest when they happen, and especially expansion announcements. Which means the last time that I was deep into the game was with the end of Dragon's expansion back in March 2022. I played that a lot. I finished it on all of my characters, all of the story and all the map exploration nine times over, and it was, um, well, quite tiresome towards the middle of that process. I also reviewed the expansion and was overall quite positive about it. My opinion there has shifted back and forth a few times since, but I think it's still generally a good expansion, albeit lacking in certain key aspects. The elite specs are hit and miss, the maps feel a bit empty and underutilised, the story felt rushed after we made it to Echovald, the void theme wasn't particularly interesting, and there's a good number of times when we're told how to feel rather than asked, i.e. beat up the bigot, which didn't come off all that well for me because it decides what my opinion should be rather than letting me make up my own. I mean, like, I agree, that guy was a bad guy, but let me decide that he's a bigot, don't dictate my opinion to me. On the upside, some elite specs are actually good. The Aurene legendaries have given me something to do, Saitung is still a great map to hang about in, fishing has been surprisingly fun, Dragon's End, now that things have settled down and the community can actually run it properly, is decent to run, but still horribly disappointing to fail still, however rare that is, and the Ender Dragon strikes are still great. But since the expansion released, Aina have re-released Season 1 content throughout that year, along with challenge modes for the strikes. I've not played those, I don't have a team that wanted to, which is a bit of a progress blocker for me. I also haven't replayed most of Season 1, the simple reason being that I strongly disliked it originally in 2013. And quite honestly, it's not changed all that much. I think the overall quality of Season 1 content is much lower than contemporary stuff, so it just doesn't seem worth my time to play. I have actually played the final episode to unlock a couple of skins though, and my god, it was way worse than I remembered. There was probably about two hours of idling while I waited for character dialogue to run by with absolutely nothing that I could do to interact with the gameplay or to speed it up in any way. The dialogue was insanely boring, and the gameplay didn't manage to match up either, feeling much like core balance in most cases. Worse was the part where they asked me to do the public instance of retaking Lion's Arch, where there weren't enough primetime players to actually beat the bosses on numerous occasions, to which my progress would get reset along with the instance, so I had to redo it over and over and over again until I finally got enough events done without other random people interfering, even though they're supposed to be. Just weird design. And I, I like to exaggerate how bad I thought Season 1 used to be, but man, this replay actually managed to be that bad. Anyway, I've kind of not had any new content to play or keep me interested in the game since Ender Dragons came out. 
And this point is important because of the latest new release, the post-EOD story content called What Lies Beneath and the Gayala Delve map. What Lies Beneath is new content to play, and that usually brings me back, so in I went, and to be blunt, it's a bit crap. This isn't the first time we've had a bit of a rubbish update and then had to wait for something else new, but this one somehow hit different. I think since it's been such a long time since we've had anything new, about a year, minus Season 1 re-releasing, a lot of players like myself were hoping that it would have had the time to cook, so to speak. Actually, ArenaNet had given us a surge of confidence way back in March 2022, like right after EOD had, had released, when they announced that they were already working on the next expansion and this content, like immediately after the expansion, which is something they've never done before, both going right to work on the next big thing and announcing it to us too. So surely we thought that with it being in development for quite a while, that we'll be seeing something pretty decent with this release. Alas, my expectations were not that high in the first place, and they never really are to be honest, but even so, I was left with a very flat feeling after playing through this map and the story. And then, ArenaNet announced their mini expansion strategy, and this changed our expectations and whole perception of what they'd been working on with their new expansion started in March last year. What lies beneath then really needed to be good to instill some confidence in these changes, and with it falling so flat it's caused quite a bit of doom and gloom in the community about the game's future, and if you ask me, rightly so. The story itself was extremely short, with only three instances, and one of those is literally just standing still and listening to Rama and Gorik talk to you. Now I appreciate that it's there and that it's voice acted, that stuff does make the game better, but there's no real gameplay to be had in that, and certainly no replayability in it. The second instance barely has you do much of anything other than fighting a mech, pressing F on some objects and NPCs, and then fighting one more regular guy. And the final instance involves flying a jade bot for a little bit of fun, killing a bunch of random underworld and fisher of woe mobs for some unexplained reason, and then fighting a boss that uses a boring trope over again, making the commander upset about their old allies being dead. Boohoo. The reappearance of the Oni here is cool, I'll give you that, but it's over pretty quickly and ends up with the character falling unconscious over the stress of dealing with it. Again, for some reason, which is so far unexplained. Not that I think any explanation will be satisfying here, but eh, I just wish I had some kind of agency in deciding if my commander is such a wet blanket or not. But it is what it is. I'll say I'm at least interested in where this will go, but then the patch is just over. It just cuts off with no satisfying conclusion at all. It genuinely feels like a story that got cut about a third of the way in. There's no proper build-up, no climax, no nothing. It just ends. It felt textureless and flat, but in a sort of unnatural kind of way. It's sort of like if I ended this video right here and didn't explain anything more. Like, not horrible, but we seem to be missing a lot here. Story content is story content, though. That's generally not what keeps me and many other players coming back for consistent gameplay. So what about the Gaiala Delve meta? What we have is this same old escort NPCs through some lane events, with some base capture events, and the occasional ambush or side thing to build up the bases for some reason. We don't actually know what it does yet. And once those two lanes have progressed to the final of three total bases, they link up and go and take on a final boss. Which is nothing special here for Guild Wars 2, events and map metas have been like this for years and it just doesn't stand out in any way. It's... it exists, I guess. The ambushes along the way are quite cool, but kind of rare unless you know where to look, at which point they aren't really ambushes anymore. Seeing the Oni was again neat, but you can't really do those events on your own. They rightfully slaughter you solo, so that's... that, that, that is what it is. And to be honest, I only even mention that because it's the only thing that really stands out in the map to me. Everything else is just masses upon masses of Jade Brotherhood mobs in yet another green Jade Cave environment, which I've had more than enough of from EOD. The whole lane meta feeling is extremely tired for me too, and the base capture bosses and overall enemy type there being a generic void orb is deeply uninspired. How many orbs are we actually going to see in the game that spit out loads of little bullet hell smaller orbs to avoid? Because that's very common. Surely there's some better enemy type to put there instead of generic black 3D sphere. And then there's the final boss. Or, well, three final bosses, but also each one is split into multiple phases and health bars that also feature generic black orbs. 
you split onto three platforms and fight a guy that turns into an orb, that turns into a second guy, that turns into a second orb, that finally turns into an Oni boss. There's like three total mechanics at all. There's break bars, shielded areas to hide in, and an AOE tell that sticks to the closest player and drops at their feet after a few seconds. And that's kind of it. It's not impressive in any way. The bosses aren't even big in size, so having a huge zerg on there just floods the screen with stuff and you can't even see the enemy anymore, let alone the tiny orange circle on the closest guy who inevitably isn't paying attention and inevitably drops it in melee range and ruins the whole group. Fun. So not great in any way, really. No spectacle, no challenge, no inventive design to the events, enemies or mechanics. The rewards are pretty rubbish as well, you get some keys to spend on the chests that spawn throughout the map, but the contents are barely worth the time. Originally they were decent, but players complained that they wanted to farm it all day, so ArenaNet obliged that, and gave us unlimited key drops, and nerfed the chest loot significantly. So it isn't even that satisfying to beat, either. There's, it's not worth a lot of gold or fun. I would say the only bonus you get are the legendary fish after the meta, which is okay, like that's worth a fair bit of gold, but it also isn't really what the map is about. Oh, and of course there is an obligatory champion train afterwards too, as kind of a victory lap, I guess, which seems to be in loads of modern meta maps these days and just feels like a bit of a chore to me. It's like, here's your loot, but here's extra steps to go and get it. I mean, even just spawning 20 chests around the boss seems like kind of a waste of time. Like, just hand me the loot, why do I have to run around in a big circle and press F? Isn't that fun? Hasn't been fun since Tarir in Art of Thorns, for God's sake. I will say that Gaiola Delve is a relatively fast map to get through, though. It took just under an hour with a late night group in this video, but there's not much going for it. At the very least, they've made the Siege Turtle actually useful here by making various obstacles and enemy types weak to it, but the mount itself still isn't much fun to drive, if you ask me, because I still can't fire my own cannons, and using the attack move stops me dead in my tracks for three seconds. It also takes a rather stupid amount of time to break the walls down in this map, which is just not fun to spam one button on a static object for, like, minutes at a time. I mean, look, we had this all the way back with Zaitan, Come on now, it's yeah, why? And finally, there's the haze mechanic, which I just don't get. Basically, you take damage as you go down into the caves, but you can just buy a filter from various base stations as you go that prevents that for a time. The cost is zero copper, which is an interesting, kind of bizarre little detail. Like, I don't know if it's trying to say something or if it's just a holdover in the UI. So it's like a free thing, it's not tied to masteries or anything even, but it, it degrades over time and requires you to go back to rebuy the thing. Which I don't understand. Is it just pointless busy work, or is it some weird attempt to prevent AFK farming from happening? Because surely there's a better way. I don't know, I, I just don't get it. There's not a lot to like about Gaiola Delve, but there sure are a bunch of things to scratch your head about. Generic void orbs, random underworld and fish of woe enemies in there, the filter mechanic, the bosses being underwhelming, and huge health sponges, and the overall loot just not being worth the time. And that is the most recent update. That is the continuation of End of Dragons that we've been waiting over a year for. Not a good look, especially as it's come as the most recent new content after announcing the mini expansion strategy. So a lot of us were looking towards this as a sign of things to come in the future, and if this is indicative of it, then yikes. Now a lot of people have and will continue to defend this update too, as only being half the map, just wait for the rest. But no, I don't accept that as a good way to look at it. I have to judge this update on its own, because frankly we could just keep waiting for the next thing indefinitely if we took that stance and never ever get anything good, just hoping the next thing's better. And we don't want that treadmill always chasing that next thing, but never really going anywhere. So I'm taking this content as it's being presented, and it's not being presented very well. They've also recently moved the map text on the world map, indicating that the expanded version of Gaiola Delve will actually be much smaller than we originally thought as well, which is another thing to perhaps temper our expectations over. 
Finally then, after all that explanation, how does this all link together and justify my so-called worry about the future of the game and the mini expansions? Now for those of you out of the loop, ArenaNet made a blog post on the 22nd of March 2022, right after Ender Dragons was finished, stating that they'd already started work on the next Canthan content, this stuff, and a new expansion. Now this was huge news to us at the time, because at the time we all thought that that meant they'd finally found their footing and started making EOD level stuff on a more regular schedule. However, another blog post almost a year later on February 13th, 2023, talked about their future plans and the idea of mini expansions going forwards. Already this was quite a tough thing to swallow knowing that they'd been working on it for over a year and that it was now going to be smaller. They say that this change is to accommodate the delivery of a more consistent content cycle, as well as providing better support for all the current systems in Guild Wars 2. In other words, recognising that there's loads of content that needs to be looked at more frequently instead of being ignored. Check out all the bugs throughout the game, for example. Now this is good in theory, but we've heard that sort of comment many times before, and uh, it doesn't often come to fruition. They then go on to say that they don't currently have the development bandwidth to do this while also working on living world updates as we now know them, and normal expansions. So the plan is to release more frequent but smaller expansions at a quote, slightly reduced price, and add additional content for those expansions over time through quarterly updates. Now this doesn't sound initially too bad, until you realise that they're cutting Living World altogether, which to me already were consistent content updates that were free, or that you could buy with gems. I suspect that we also won't be able to buy the new content with gems, which means spending money more frequently on the game, which is good for the company, of course, but bad for consumers. We also don't know how much they'll be either yet. Slightly reduced price could mean anything. It's all very subjective on what you might be willing to pay currently. But if Gaiala Delve is anything to go by as a sort of test run, there's absolutely no chance that I would have been happy to pay anything for that content. So, no living world, more frequent payments, less content overall, no mention of elite specs, and drip-fed additional quarterly updates that are potentially more consistent than we get currently. Honestly, it's up to you if that sounds alright, but it's got me waiting for better news so far. This sounds worrying to me. There is a little bit of information, but it's pretty vague as always. ArenaNet say, the first release will bring a new story arc, which makes these mini expansions standalone in theory. You get two new open world maps, two strike missions, new gameplay and combat features, and what does that even mean? Because they're not masteries, because they then say masteries as another thing later in the post. And there's also no mention of elite specialisations either in this whole post, which is questionable. And then, over the quarterly updates, we'll get, quote, another map, more story, a new fractal, and CMs for that and the strikes. So, you buy in for two maps, whatever the story might be, two strikes, and the vague promise of other stuff. And then, over time, you'll eventually get a third map, a fractal, and some CMs, which you've already paid for up front, but also have to wait for the release of. So it's kind of like pre-ordering, which nobody likes. So that's not great. And it doesn't sound like a great deal to me. In fact, I made this terrible MS Paint thing to try and visualise it a little bit better compared to previous expansion releases and the Living World updates in between. Please forgive the crudity of my drawing. But as you can see, Heart of Thorns, Path of Fire, and End of Dragons were pretty meaty expansions where all of the content came up front, minus raids, but there's been no mention of those going forwards either, so we can kind of ignore it. And the story was all tied up by the end of each of these expansions. Heart of Thorns cost a little more than the other two, but the price came down to a consistent level for those next two expansions. Elite specs for me were a huge reason to buy into these expansions as well, and with no mention of them being considered for the future so far, that's a bit of a worrying prospect for most. Though, since the EOD ones were pretty weird, I don't personally have a problem with them being cut if they're out of good ideas for them, but it is certainly a loss in value, especially for PvP and wealthy world players. The Living World Seasons added a consistent level of content over the course of their release schedules, 
They furthered the story of previous expansions and led towards the next one too. And as you can see, season three and four I consider to be quite chunky content when you look at it all together. Six maps, additional masteries and whatever else came with them. Even mounts in season four. The Icebrood Saga felt a lot like a weaker season, not an expansion, having half of the maps of previous ones and a lot of filler or outright rubbish stuff towards the end. See Dragon Response missions and the very clearly cut Primordus content arc, for example. The strikes do make up for it somewhat, though, giving us some additional endgame for replayability. The Icebrood Saga actually started out incredibly well, way better than most other content, if you ask me, but became so much less over time, making it on average a weaker, thinner box on my rubbish diagram. And all of these updates were totally free if you were actually logging in regularly, which is huge value that we're losing out on with this mini X-Pack strategy. Looking at End of Dragons and the Gaala Delve release, we can compare the post-EOD release content to what would normally be a Living World season, and see that it's extremely cut down, from six maps to one in Gaala Delve, but with a fractal edition instead. Is this good or bad? Well, that's up to you, I think. This was the time to generate some confidence in the quality of things going forward, really let us feel confident in the idea of these mini X-Packs, and it just did not at all land. Meaning, for me, the mini X-Pack looks extremely small in comparison to everything else that we've had before it. Considering that it'll be less than a normal expansion and released over time, and be forced to wrap up in its self-contained standalone story within those three maps that it releases, I'm not feeling very optimistic about it. All the wording in the blog post makes it sound smaller, cut down, lower your expectations, and Gaiola Delve lowered them a lot already. I suppose all of this depends on how much you value certain types of content in the game, and how much that you're willing to spend on those things. For me, it's asking a lot to suddenly start paying more for more frequent updates of unknowable quality. Hearthorns was awful at launch, and it took six months of content drought and work to get entirely rebalanced and restructured. The grind was enormous when it first launched. The rewards were terrible when it first launched, and that six months were just to rebalance those two things. Living World Season 4 had the corner update, which still is terrible. The Icebrood Saga started off great, but fumbled the second half of it. Gaiola Delve has been the most recent letdown, and who knows how many other things I'm forgetting. Arena, if anything, are inconsistent, so I really need to know a lot more about these mini-expansions before I'm happy about them, because so far, there's not a lot to go on other than they're probably going to be smaller than normal. And that doesn't sound exciting, no matter how you try and word it. And the lack of communication strikes Again, this is unsurprising as well because Arena has a long history of radio silence, a sudden burst of opening up which the community embraces and praises them for, and then Arena net make a mistake and can't handle the negative comments from the community so they go radio silent once again for months at a time. Like how many times have we seen this happen? Talk to us, man. You gotta talk about this stuff, otherwise these feelings that I'm echoing in this video are exactly what happen. Again and again and again, this cycle just keeps going on. Surely End of Dragons was supposed to break that cycle, was it not? Wasn't that the whole tagline of the expansion? Ugh, memes. So there you go. I've likely fumbled this explanation quite a bit myself. Even reading it back sounds a bit flimsy to me, but like I said, there's not a whole lot of information to analyse, and what little there is all sounds like you get less and you pay more to me. It really is just that simple, yet it's quite hard to not sound entitled when I talk negatively about it. But I gotta I got speak my mind, man. And if you think I'm wrong, then I'd absolutely love to hear it in the comments, because I'd also love to be proven wrong. I want to play Guild Wars 2. I like having stuff to do in this game, but if future content ends up anything at all like Gaiola Delve... Oh, that's not gonna be good. Thanks for listening to this ranty ramble, and cheers for watching.